Thanks for joining us. We have Aidan here from SpinUp, and the session today will be on building a Web3 music experience using Spindex. Aidan, I'll let you take the stage, and if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to pop them in the chat and we can answer them at the end. Thanks. Cool. Hey, everyone. I'm Aidan from SpinUp, and Today, I'm going to be talking to you about SpinAmp and showing you some of the dev tools that we have available that you can potentially use during the hackathon. So if you're not familiar with SpinAmp, uh, SpinAmp is a way to help you explore, curate, share, and listen to the growing public library of Web3 artists and, and media. And there's so much going on in Web3 music that you've all seen. And so what we're trying to do is index and aggregate all of that and also give a way for people to really consume all of the content that's being produced. And so the main kind of product we're working on is a app for listening to music. Um, we've got an iPhone app, a web app, and an Android. Our website's www.spinapp.xyz if you want to check out the app. And so, yeah, it's on, on the App Store um, on iOS. Uh, it, this is kind of what it looks like on iOS for browsing music. Similarly, it's on Android on the Google Play Store. And here's the web app. Um, you can use the app to browse through artists, see the different platforms we index. Um, and listen to tracks. And it's really designed to be a music player that is really smooth and easy to use in like a frictionless way of listening to and discovering music. Um, but what we released a few days ago is dev.spinamp.xyz. Um, and so this is our collection of tools for helping people build new music experiences and tap into the Web3 music industry uh, and ecosystem. And so there's a whole bunch of tools that we've got available. I'll go through them and talk about them each uh, one by one today and hopefully inspire some ideas for people to start building new Web3 music experiences. Um, also, if you want to connect with us, feel free to uh, reach out on Twitter or join our Discord um, and ask questions and get involved and we'll definitely help you uh, use any of these uh, tools or, or get onboarded um, to getting to build stuff. Um, and so, yeah, so maybe I'll go through the tools one by one. Uh, the first one is SpinAmp Embed. Uh, so this is uh, an easy way that you can embed uh, and customize a music player to put on your website. Uh, you can see here, uh, we've got this website you can go to to kind of configure it. And on the right is this embedded player for Chaos, which is a Web3 music artist. Um, and so if you want to use it, you go to SpinAmp, um, find any song, any artist, uh, any playlist that you like. So for example, here's a playlist that I've made. Uh, I can go and click the share button and then go to this embedded site generator, paste in the URL, click generate code. And now you've got an embedded player you can insert into any website. So this is a player for a playlist that I made. Um, and yeah, that's it. In time, we're gonna add more customization to this, like custom theming, custom layouts, custom content. And we've already got like a few people that are interested in potentially using this, like one idea, uh, we've been thinking about um, is you know taking these playlists and, and minting them in F NFTs. So you could like embed the player and have a site to kind of browse uh, players and, and add them and, and mint them as NFTs. Um, or primarily, this is for artists that you know want to have the player embedded into their websites. They can use this to generate a playlist of their artist's discography from Web3 and place that there. Uh, so that's spin up embed. Um, that'll be fleshed out and improving over time. Um, and it kind of embeds our existing uh, interface. Um, but when you start to get into it, the more interesting tools are kind of our developer-focused tools. Uh, so the next one is SpinUp SDK. So this is SDK. It's a JavaScript client um, for our API and our indexer, which gives you an SDK, which gives you access to kind of all of the data that we've indexed across Web3. So that includes music and FT mints, transfers, sales and bids are coming soon. Um, it includes artist data and profiles, track data, playlists. Um, and the, the nice thing about our index and our aggregator is that it creates like a cohesive cross-platform uh, profile for all artists and tracks. And it's really like designed to build front-end experiences that have high quality data, high quality content um, that, that run fast. Um, and that give you good access to the actual, you know, content and metadata um, across all of these platforms. Um, so installing it is straightforward. Uh, you install it with the Arno NPM and then using it, uh, we expose different APIs you can use. So the documentation is here and it's on our GitHub page over here. 
um, as an example for usage. Um, here's one example fetching a track by a slug. Uh, a slug is like a short uh, piece of text that refers to a track so that it can be shared in links quite easily. Um, and there's other for artists and tracks and NFTs and playlists. And if you look through the API reference on the left, um, you can see the different types we use. It is kind of TypeScript based. And so throughout the um, throughout the SDK, you you know may come across types that you want to use for your different queries. And so you can refer to the different types here. Um, similarly, uh, here is the API reference that we expose for, for the different records, so like for tracks. There's an API for fetching all the tracks, for fetching tracks by ID. Um, for artists, you can fetch all the artists, fetch them by IDs, by slugs, which is like their name, uh, fetch specific tracks for a given artist. Uh, if you look at collections, this is for fetching collections from particular Ethereum addresses. One thing to keep in mind is this is not fetching the collections in terms of NFTs, it's fetching them in terms of like tracks. And, and that's kind of one thing that our SDK has that you probably won't find in other APIs is um, it's quite easy to work with actual tracks and artists rather than just the underlying NFTs, because there's a lot of uh, different experiments and, and things that artists are doing with NFTs. Some artists are minting one of one, some artists are minting, minting say, 100 NFTs, some artists are, are doing weirder things. And so what our kind of APIs give you much more cleanly and easily is like the underlying tracks and artists and how those are connected to NFTs. Uh, similarly, you can see with our NFT APIs, um, here, this one is for fetching all the NFTs that correspond to a specific track. So whether the, the track is like part of a one-on-one -on -one platform or a kind of multi-print with 25 NFTs or a generative project in, in the future when, we'll, when we have those, um, there'll be clean ways to uh, kind of distinguish between uh, the tracks and the NFTs. Um, there's other kind of APIs for ownership and for exploring NFT owners. Um, there's APIs for platforms. These are the current platforms that we uh, kind of index at the moment. Um, and then lastly, playlists. Uh, and so kind of the, there's kind of two ways of interacting with the playlist API. One is retrieving them. Uh, so if you're not kind of familiar with playlists, um, playlists are created within SpinAmp through our interface. And when you're using the app, people will be able to uh, kind of create their own playlists within the app. Uh, playlists are stored offline uh, in clients, and they're kind of just backed up onto um, our API for data availability, but uh, you know everything's very much decentralized and client-centric. And so you can fetch playlists by ID that people have created and um, access them through this API. Um, if you're looking to create playlists, there's also an API for doing that. And for that, um, you need to submit a signer. One thing for our playlists is you know they're all signed by individual users' wallets, um, and so. Uh, in order to create playlists, you need to sign them um, and add the track IDs to a playlist. And um, yeah, reach out for more details if you want to play with those APIs. There's also one kind of utility that we've got available to get the resized artwork URL. You know, we provide URLs for artwork, but when you're building a front end uh, experience that you want to be fast, you probably want to resize the artwork to be specific sizes um, for faster loading. And so the API uh, provides that. Uh, the next kind of Tool we've got available is Spinamp Hooks. So this is essentially a wrapper around all the SDK that I just showed you that puts them into React Hooks to make them easy to use within a React application. So as you can see, um, here is the repo. You install it with npm on. And here's an example of using the all tracks query. Um, this, these hooks kind of are wrapped around uh, React query. Um, and so that gives you nice things like loading and refetching and error handling. And you can use that to pull all the tracks into your React components um, and, and use them straight away without even uh, needing to dig into a lower level SDK. Similarly, there's documentation for that. And so uh, here's the same kind of documentation for our spin up hooks, installation, usage, et cetera. Um, and for the reference, it's got much of the same APIs that I just went through on the SDK are available as React hooks as well. And there's some docs on advanced usage if, if interested. Cool. Um, so the next thing I'll talk about is our actual indexer and our API. So our indexer is the kind of underlying thing behind these repos. Um, here's an, and it's kind of exposing an API through GraphQL. 
there is a GraphQL playground you can play with if you want to kind of dive into more of the technical details. And um, this is the like index API GraphQL, which is linked to from dev.spinet.xyz. Um, and as part of the playground, you get like this UI that you can use to explore and create a schema. So on the right, you can see there's uh, kind of docs that I'm uh, an explorer that I'm looking at where you can see the different queries. These correspond to different records in the database um, and uh, the different types of queries. And if you look at a little particular query, say here, all artists, you can see it accepts arguments for filtering, uh, sorting, and, and those kinds of things. Um, similarly, when you're using the Explorer, you can easily like construct queries on the left and play with the uh, interface to find the query you want, and then and kind of run a query. So here you can see I've constructed a query for getting all the tracks, uh, getting the title, the audio, the art of, of the tracks, uh, the artist, and actually, actually the NFTs for for that track as well uh, in a nested query that gives you it all. Um, I'd still recommend like if you're building an experience to use the SDK rather than the underlying API because the SDK provides a few nice things. Like I mentioned, it provides um, the uh, artwork resizing, um, but also more importantly, uh, the SDK kind of handles some things that may be harder to do from just the API. So for example, here in, if we look at an example in the API, um, here you can see our API has um, an IPFS hash for the audio, as well as a, a URL for the audio. And this kind of is a little peek into how our indexer works, where kind of philosophically, what we try to do is build uh, an indexer with data that's decentralized by default, but nothing's perfect as we all know with NFTs, sometimes people you know, use band-aids here and there. And so for a lot of the platforms we index from, sometimes the audio may be stored both best and um, on a centralized server. Catalog's an example. Uh, which is nice because catalog puts everything on IPFS in addition to their server. And so when you're using the SDK, we are automatically going to try and uh, use the, the kind of more decentralized system. So when you're using the SDK, uh, you'll be pulling URLs from IPFS, but they are going to do that yet. And so it does fall back to um, centralized URLs sometimes um, when, when needed. And, you know, over time, I think we're going to improve our indexer to kind of push everything to be decentralized, even if the underlying platforms don't do that. Um, so when you're using SDK, it gives you kind of the best of both where uh, you'll get the like most decentralized um, setup uh, as possible. And then over time, as things become more decentralized and, and like more underlying music NFT platforms work on improving how they create and maintain their NFTs, um, it should uh, converge to becoming more decentralized and then kind of be aligned with the ethos of progressive decentralization where, you know, we want to build stuff that people can actually use. Um, and uh, take advantage of kind of uh, blockchains and decentralization and pass along that spectrum uh, over time as we can. Similarly, that, that applies to our index itself. And so next I'll talk about that. Um, so um, let me just open that up. Here is the Git repo for our actual indexer. Um, and so this is a kind of decentralized indexer for music NFTs uh, that does the aggregation that I've been talking about through our SDKs. Um, this is kind of probably a more complicated repo. If you're a more experienced developer, then this may be something that you're interested in looking at. Um, how it works is we index on-chain music activity across multiple chains, and we augment that data with both the on-chain data that's on-chain, but also like off-chain data from you know some centralized sources, so IPFS, Rweave, and then the index also transforms and connects that data into a comprehensive, cohesive, and standardized schema um, that builds stuff like comprehensive artist profiles across platforms. Um, it also is designed to kind of store and maintain up-to-date real-time data for front-end experiences that are like real-time and up-to-date. Um, it's got a bunch of dependencies and setup that you can go through if you want to install it and run it, um, and some guidelines on operations. But maybe more interestingly, I'll talk about is the design goals. Uh, so when building this kind of indexer, um, there's a bunch of design goals, you know, being fast, up to date, and ha having low latency and liveness are uh, important. But there are kind of more things that become important when you're trying to build something decentralized. So handling crashes and downtimes and errors of ourself is, uh, and, and our index index is important. But we also need to handle uh, what happens with our dependencies. And so 
you know, like the indexer, for example, indexes some stuff from off-chain APIs that may go down or go change over time. And we want to ensure that the indexer continues gracefully irrespective. And, and so it's designed to be able to do that. Um, it's also designed to be like parallelizable because, you know, we're adding new contracts and platforms slowly over time. We don't have to reprocess everything. And so um, ways to add that are uh, built-in extensions uh, for adding new metadata and new data transformations are, are built in as well. And a key thing is decentralization and, and consensus without coordination. And so what that means is like, if someone else runs this repo and, and runs the indexer, um, they should get to the exact same database state as anyone else, which means that, you know, even though we don't have a peer-to-peer -peer network, we don't have consensus, if different people are running the stack, they'll end up with the same data in the same database. Um, and so essentially, get to decentralization without requiring heavy consensus or coordination. Um, and in order to do kind of do that, there's some design choices we need to make within the data um, and the processing pipeline. Um, an example of that, if you look through the architecture, if you want to get into more of the details, is using things like CRDTs uh, as part of how we index. Um, so this is kind of some of our goals and what we aim for. Uh, again, it's not perfect, but we, you know, make sure we do this for the most important bits of data, like identifies for records. Uh, and again, um, over time, are gonna flesh this out and improve it uh, as it evolves. And so that's our indexer. Um, and so yeah, to summarize overview of our different tools, if you wanna just embed our existing stuff into your website, you can use this spin up embed. If you wanna build your own front end uh, that taps into the API using the SDK or hooks or potentially the underlying API is good. or if you want to kind of contribute to a, a growing open source project, the indexer is a good place to, to look to start. Uh, and again, if you want to keep in touch, you can follow us on Twitter and join our Discord and um, keep in touch. And especially over the course of the hackathon, I'll be available as well as one or two other devs on our team for help and support. Um, we've also got kind of a, a bunch of APIs that, sorry, a bunch of ideas that we suggested as part of the hackathon. But if you're looking for ideas, feel free to reach out and check the ETH Global Hackathon Prizes page where there's a bunch of other ideas that we've listed as potential hackathon ideas you can work on. Um, so yeah, that's it. Maybe I'll pause there, check the chat. Um, if anyone has any questions or thoughts, feel free to share them in the chat now. Um, and we can kind of wait a few minutes to see if anything comes up. Otherwise, uh, that's it. Thanks, Aiden. Um, we'll wait a few seconds just to see if any questions come up. And feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. Okay, I think you've answered everything. Um, but if any question comes up in the meantime, feel free to go to Discord and go to sponsor dash spin up and Aiden will be able to answer it there. Thanks again. Cool. Thanks, everyone.